Hello everyone, today I found you a real world story about GitHub engineers and how they managed to overcome the scalability limitations of relational databases. In fact, they fully rely on a MySQL database as their main database technology to back their services. And they even apply a straight out of the textbook main replica pattern. However, those textbooks also say that this pattern comes with strict scalability limitations. With increasing numbers of requests, data becomes inconsistent and users might be presented with outdated data. So how did GitHub engineers really overcome those limitations and manage to successfully scale their MySQL database setup alongside with their ever-growing user base? Well, let's find out. At GitHub, they not just heavily rely on relational databases, they also go with the classic main replica pattern, where write requests go to a single node called main, and all the other nodes are called replicas, and they simply replay the main's changes. This happens asynchronously, and that means the changes made to the main are not immediately reflected on replicas. Each replica pulls the changes from its main and replace them as fast as it can. If you're looking for a fancy term for your system design interview to describe this behavior, call it eventual consistency. And you can learn more about the main replica pattern in my video dedicated to this topic. I link it for you in the top right corner and in the video description below. So by design, the main replica pattern only provides eventual consistency. And well, that means that it's always a delay between the point in time where changes are made to the main node and the time where those changes are available for reads on some replica and even later on all replicas. And this delay is actually called replication lag. The higher the replication lag, the more the main and the replicas get out of sync, serving traffic off of a lagging replica leads to poor user experience as someone who just made a change is still being served with the now outdated data. Imagine how unsatisfying it would be if you wanted to finally merge a big pull request of yours. You hit the merge button and nothing happens. Well, what might seem to be just a little, maybe even unimportant glitch it can be a real big issue for any digital product if it happens with every second button you hit. Replication lags can be the root cause for such systematic experience flaws. And they're also known to be a real weak spot of the main replica pattern. It also doesn't only affect user experience, but also availability. The main node is a single point of failure. And once it goes down due to hardware issues or pretty much anything, and we have heavy replication lags in the system. The latest changes are probably completely lost because they haven't been replicated yet. That's everything but ideal. So what did the smart engineers at GitHub come up with to mitigate the impact of those replication lags? The first action they took is already pretty genius in my opinion. While they couldn't prevent lags from happening, they could prevent users from reading off laggy replicas. So. GitHub's system automatically puts aside those lagging replicas after a couple seconds of lagging, lets them catch their breath and avoids sending read traffic their way until they actually have caught up. However, the few seconds it takes to set aside lagging replicas are still too much for GitHub's standard. Depending on the workload, a few seconds still may lead to thousands of users having a bad experience. Seems like there is no easy way to maintain a very low replication lag. But well, that's kind of known. So how did the GitHub engineers actually go this extra mile to still achieve it? First, they looked at which queries were causing the lags. And well, they recognized that large volume operations like cleanup tasks, schema changes, or simply operations that affected large data sets were the main reason for many and heavy replication lags. Why is that? Well, while a replica is busy applying a change of let's say 100,000 rows, users unfortunately don't stop triggering 
more write requests. And that's why by the time the batch update is completed and the replica is already lagging, it still requires even more time to catch up with the latest changes. At GitHub, the first countermeasure was to simply break down such massive queries into many small queries of only a 50 to 100 rows each. These smaller queries can easily be processed by Replica quickly. However, the numbers still added up. On a busy hour, heavily loaded Replica still struggled to manage both read traffic and the massive changes coming down the replication stream. And that's when the GitHub engineers drilled even further down into the problem and surfaced that no particular user was actually waiting for those large scale operations to complete. So as a conclusion, it would be completely fine for those operations to take a little bit longer to complete. The idea they came up with to leverage this finding was first break down large operations into small segments, just as before. Make each segment small enough and safe to send down the replication stream. Now, the new idea is to avoid sending too many segments too quickly, because this could still overload the replica. So, better pause between each segment and ask the replica, are you happy and in good shape? And then only send the next segment if this is true. Otherwise, keep asking the replica till it replies with yes, I'm happy and in good shape, please send the next one. That's a cool idea, right? The fancy term to describe this pattern is throttling, by the way. However, there is no direct mechanism in MySQL to do that. Closest would be semi-synchronous replication. But even that neither guarantees replication lag to be caught up, nor to be within reasonable margin. It is up to the user really to be able to identify the relevant replicas and ask, what is your current lag? If you want to learn about the difference of asynchronous, synchronous and semi-synchronous replication, I do have a dedicated video on the topic. You'll find the link in the top right corner and in the video description below. Without a feature to throttle the replication process available, what could have GitHub engineers have done? Well, that's the beauty of big tech companies. They do have the resources and the knowledge to build their own solution on top of existing ones. Let me introduce you to Freno. Freno is GitHub's central throttling service. In its very basic essence, Freno runs as a standalone service that understands replication lag status and can make recommendations to inquiring apps. And this is not such an almost too good to be true success story. Like it has been built by just a single genius 10x engineer over the weekend. No. In fact, they had multiple throttling implementations, which were all outgrown by the increasing complexity of their system, one after the other. Eventually, they managed to replace all of them with Freno. You can check out the code on GitHub, play with it, use it in your own projects as you like, as Freeno is open source and available under the MIT license. I put a link in the video description below. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy telling you about this journey GitHub engineers took to erase replication lags from their MySQL database setup. I learned about this story on GitHub's engineering blog. Big shout out to the authors Miguel Fernandez and Shlomi Noach, who were senior engineers at GitHub at the time the article was published in 2017. If you now got hooked and you also want to work on such meaningful and large scale problems, I maybe can help with that. On this channel, I fully focus on providing you with everything you need to successfully get through the software engineering interview at any big tech company. If you want to support this channel, it's as easy as hitting the subscribe button and maybe the bell as well, if you feel like. Besides that, I recently also launched a system design interview preparation course. If you struggle with this kind of interviews, check it out. I'm teaching you there how to pass the interview with confidence and ease at any big tech company. And probably also important, I made it fun to watch because learning something new shouldn't really feel like a grind. Definitely not. So I put the link in the top right corner and in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching this video and catch you next time.